Hey everyone, welcome to Verse by Verse Bible Teaching. My name is Chris. And I'm Mike. And you can go to our website, which is versebyversebibletteaching.com. And you can also check out the podcast on iTunes. And we've been going through the book of Galatians. We're now in Galatians chapter 3 and just starting it out. Um, one of the things I'm learning is that this idea of grace and the law is really um, made me think. And, and the Lord's given me a lot of opportunities to really see how this is something that we all need to know about. And even though we might understand it theologically, there's still a lot of um, a lot of reasons to to get it re- redefined in, in the context of your own life. Um, and that, that is that I, at least what I'm learning is that after uh, you have been made right before God by faith in Christ, then your stance before God is not getting better when you do good and it's not getting worse when you do bad. It, it's kind of like a constant. Uh, there are inherent blessings if you do good things that God instructs you to do in his word and inherent curses if we sin, but those things are more cause and effect things based on the nature of the universe as God has it set up. But it, it's it's important to not let the devil tell you that God has changed his position about you even slightly in either direction based on your piety or on your sin, because your standing is as good as it's ever going to be right now if you are in Christ. He views you with Christ's righteousness. Paul has already, we're now in the very first part of this, and Paul has already defended that gospel that he first preached to the Galatians using his testimony. And now he's going to do the same thing using the testimony of the Galatians. And then finally in this chapter, he's going to use the testimony of the Old Testament. So mm-hmm. uh, you want to get started with uh, with uh, verse 1? Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Uh, So, by way of review, the truth that the Galatians are not obeying uh, is, of course, the fact of the gospel of grace. Uh, Paul has just just spent a lot of time telling the Galatians about his apostolic calling, uh, defending it to the believers in uh, in Galatia. He's done that in the, in the the previous chapters. Uh, he makes particular mention to the time when he withstood Peter to the face because he said Peter stood condemned. Uh, very strong, strong language. Uh, the, f- the last phrase here in this, in this verse, uh, crucified among you, is interesting. Uh, uh, it is my, it is my, my thought uh, that part of Jesus' coming, as described in the Gospels, is that he came to establish the spiritual kingdom of God's reign. Uh, within the purview of that reign is the fact that uh, interest in, entrance into God's kingdom is, of course, voluntary. Nobody can force you into that into the kingdom. You know, somebody holds you down underwater and says, "Become a Christian." It just it doesn't work like that. It's all about free will. Uh, John the Baptist mentioned that he was not Elijah, and uh, yet later in the book of Matthew, Jesus says that if you care to accept it, he himself is Elijah who is to come. Uh, uh, now, this whole idea, you know, care to accept it. It's all about freely accepting God's gift of immortality. Uh, he gives us the free will to accept it or reject it, uh, and hence the phrase here in Galatians, crucified among you. Uh, uh, God maybe didn't necessarily die for those who would never accept his kingship, although even if it was just you, uh, uh, the listener, or me, or just Chris, or anyone else, just one person, he still would have died uh, for that one person's sis- sinfulness, that's how personal that that crucifixion and that that death and that resurrection uh, and, and and our sort of spiritual resurrection is. Chris, yeah, that's a really interesting uh, take on that. I actually, uh, read that verse a little differently. That last part of that verse, but I think that your uh, analysis of it uh, works just as good with with it um, and, and sort of a good uh, addition to it. But I'll start with the first part. It says, "Oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you?" And, of course, as you mentioned, these are pretty strong words here from the Apostle to the Galatians. The word bewitched is uh, baskenio, I think, or I'm not sure it's inya, but uh, which means to malign. That is, by extension, to uh, fascinate uh, by false representations. This idea is what's sometimes called um, an evil eye, or it has this connotation of of an evil eye based on some subtleties of what he says there, uh, which is, at least in one case, where a snake would seem to hypnotize its prey. And so it appears that the Galatians have get, had given sort of similar uh, attention to some false teaching of some sort. And I don't know if Paul's actually saying here that there was some actual bewitching as you know some form of occult power, but uh, he or he could have been merely saying the gospel was so 
well explained to you, and you received it so well, so how could you fall so quickly? Were you bewitched or something? Uh, sort of like a rhetorical question. In any case, I will say that the false doctrines, um, they do have a curious quality about them that it might, uh, that might amount to a sort of a magical enchanting. And mm. as such, offer uh, often the best methods for helping someone that has fallen in, in under that sort of evil eye is to pray pray for them and pray against uh, the devil. And as well, you know, instruct them in their error, plant seeds in that regard. Sometimes it's really hard at first to, you know, you're not going to, it's very rare that you're going to be able to just immediately turn somebody from the error based on like quoting the the debunking Bible passage. But you can pray for them, pray against the devil and, and that seed of, of the instruction will help break the bonds uh, of that that teaching may have. Um, so this, this line before whose eyes Jesus, Jesus Christ has evidently been evidently set forth crucified among you. Um, what I believe is being said here is that the gospel was so clearly explained to the Galatians that it was as if he was crucified right in front of them, emphasizing the point that even after the strong teaching, they turned away. Hmm. That's a, that's a very interesting point as well. You'll notice, uh, I think, and I'll have to look at a couple verses later, uh, Paul, in referring to the Old Testament, talks about it. Uh, talks about it in a way that it foresaw or anticipated uh, the need to say certain things. Uh, really, really, sort of highlighting the idea that that many Jews believe that uh, the word, in 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 many ways, uh, was sort of alive. Yeah, I noticed yeah. that too. Yeah. Um, let's see, Galatians uh, three, chapter two or verse two, rather. Excuse me. Uh, this only what I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. Now this hearing, quote-unquote, of faith is part and parcel to what Paul makes mention of here, uh, obviously specifically here in chapter 3, uh, but to a lesser extent really runs through the background of his rebuke and testimony in chapter 1 and 2. Uh, Paul is contrasting the idea of being able to, in a, to in a sense, uh, impress God uh, by our works of doing good, if you will, uh, with the idea of putting trust in the perfection and righteousness of Jesus. Uh, now, this obviously has very many interesting ap aspects, some of which we've already tried to convey in the intro. Um, and, but if we do dwell here for a, for, for a second, uh, let me just ask several questions to the audience, to the listener, to consider for themselves a second. Is it good if someone were to do good merely to impress God, would it still be good if we are doing uh, as we are seeking a blessing from the Most High? Uh, would it be righteousness as we are seeking to essentially buy our way into his presence? Uh, if we did good uh, because we were trying to be holy by doing, perhaps the most damning question is, if God were to examine our heart, would he truly find good if we were doing the good just to impress God? Yep. Very, very interesting and thought-provoking questions. And I will, I will let people dwell on all that stuff because I, I have made answers to myself. And I think, I think those answers would be self-evident uh, if people just listen, listen to their heart enough, mm -hmm. listen to the Spirit. Chris? All right. Uh, verse 2, this would only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by hearing of faith? So he's basically saying, just tell me this one thing, guys. Remember when uh, I was there last time and you were filled with the Spirit, uh, apparently, so so wonderfully? Uh, was it because you had been following the law so well that you were gifted with this new life by God? Um, the Gentiles among them had probably never even heard of the law at the time of their conversion. So it's kind of an interesting question. But Paul is going to start his case using their own experience by their salvation experience. Um, and that's interesting because he it shows that at least enough of the people at the churches of Galatia were very powerfully born again to refer to them as, as the majority here.